Now, buddy, this plane right here is not a normal Concorde, even though it might just look like it. No, this is the Concorde 2.0, or as it's called, the Concorde B, everybody. Yeah, so you know, this interesting X-Plane add-on was released this week here, and it says here, Concorde Model B would have been the very next Concorde airframe to be delivered. Yes, everybody, in today's video, it is time for another history lesson. You know, over the past few years, we've talked so much about the original Concorde that had its first flight in 1969, which is a number I love to say. And you know, we've talked so much about the issues the original Concorde had, you know, which eventually led up to its failure in the early 2000s. I mean, things like the cockpit being incredibly complicated. It wasn't a very easy plane to fly, but it definitely had some bigger issues in its, you know, efficiency rates. I mean, look at these afterburners. This thing just eats fuel. I mean, that's kind of the point of afterburners. They just spray fuel behind the engine and it works. But this is a plane that can carry all those passengers at a speed of Mach 2. Even though it burns a lot of fuel, it is incredibly loud. I mean, we all remember watching these YouTube videos from Concords taking off above London Heathrow's neighborhood. Check this out. Here's these afterburners. Oh, oh my god, like, look at that. Yes. You know, yes, over these years, I've always wondered why didn't they have any plans to improve the Concorde in any way? Make it more efficient, give it a bit of a better range, and a bit of a modern cockpit. And well, they actually had planned that with, once again, the Concorde B model. According to HeritageConcorde.com, this was the aircraft that airlines really needed and the aircraft the manufacturers wanted to build. Unfortunately, the political pressure intervened and the will to proceed with it simply evaporated. So, buddy, I thought it's time now to check out this Concorde B, see how it could have been. Yes, welcome indeed aboard the silent Concorde, as you could call it. More on that later. But one of the most interesting changes the Concorde B would have had would be the wings. I mean, check those out. Don't they look a bit odd? I mean, check this out. I prepared a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison between the two Concords. Here is the conventional one, the one we love. You know, normal shaped wing. But this is the new one, which goes a bit crazier. It has a bit of a more curve to it. Also, something you cannot really see that well in this comparison is how how they changed the, the trailing edge a bit. Two major differences from the original Concorde would have been a larger wing incorporating more fuel. Yes, this would increase the range of this plane that could only go, you know, relatively small distances. I think this way you could have sent this plane across the Pacific Ocean here. Concorde B and hold us, hold on. Oh my God, they actually, oh my, no way. They can't keep getting away with it. Why would they add people in the cockpit? It's absolutely creepy. Why would you ruin such a perfect add-on? I mean, the, the <laughs> look at this, the flight engineer doesn't even have a head. Thank you very much. Maybe it is indeed time then to check out the cockpit, which as you can see is, uh, it's not good looking, but it is a bit of an interpretation of what the Concorde B cockpit would have looked like with proper screens. And not only that, look at that. We've got a fly-by wire system, which incorporates a Airbus style side stick. After all, this is a very French plane. And this was around the time where they started adding joysticks to Airbuses. So come on, let's, yep, there we go. Let's put the visor down. We still have a snoot droot. That one doesn't go down all the way compared to the didn't it do it for you style Concorde, the original one. That is because the wing also incorporated leading edge flaps, or as you would say, slats. You know, this is something that the Concorde originally did not have any flaps at all. So to this Delta wing, they would have added, you know, proper flaps. And that way you could have a reduced takeoff distance. That's first one. But also landing would be at a lower angle of attack, meaning you wouldn't stand up like a like a bear. Anyway, looking great. So let me do the takeoff indeed. Go full power in the Concorde. Still has four engines, four Olympus engines, which at the time would have actually been available to build. Here we go. Let's take off. We've got a bit of a, you know, lower noise level. No afterburners in this one at all, but still the same amount of power. Oh, uh, maybe a bit. Oh, no. Maybe this is a bit unrealistic. Come on. Don't take off already at 130 knots. Jesus Christ. That was quick. And here we go. We can put the landing gear up. And yes, it is still very much a Concorde. It is lacking the insane sound. But you got to consider the unpracticality of, of a high noise plane. So that's great. I rather Concorde B is flying and it's flying very well. Yes, with the same thrust the original Olympus 593 engines had in the original Concorde. Now, these were, by the way, the uh, Olympus 610. Anyway, come on, let's maybe 
we go to 50,000 feet and see if that works well. That was 70,000 feet. We can see the stars. We're a bit high, but no problem for the new Concorde B then. Check this out. It's actually flying pretty well. We're already above the speed of sound, I think, right? And meanwhile, we can maybe check out the cabin or something. All right, first of all, we've not got no engineering panel here. Yeah, some proper automation is probably something that could have happened in this plane. Maybe make it more airbus -y. And the cabin is a bit very broken. Uh, okay, great. I didn't expect that. Right. I mean, the funny thing is that you can see a cabin from the outside view here. Can you see through? I would like to check that out very much, but we can't. But you already yes, the Concorde is flying well. Very well, actually. I mean, honestly, this takeoff distance thing very much um, interests me. I mean, the Concorde, you know, we talked so much about this. Had lots of issues with its, you know, rotation speed basically being 180 knots. It would have to land this plane at 330 kilometers an hour. Insanely fast, insanely hard. Let's see if they really improve that. Let me see. Come on, let me try here taking off at La Mole Airport. Yes, give it full power. Oh, this sound sucks, though. I think it wouldn't have sound like this. This just sound like a fan. Like, it's drawing my hair at the moment. All right, come on. Let me take off. Look at that acceleration. Jesus Christ. Come on. Full power. Absolutely no problem at all. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Lamau, that was no problem at all. With lots of knots to spare before we reach stall speeds. This is a dream airliner. I like this very much. I mean, let's see how slow we can get this little guy here on an approach. This is out. Beautiful landing gear. Oh, here we go. 140 knots. That's something unthinkable on the Concorde. Or a bit unthinkable on the B version as well. Oh, you know what's actually not doing super badly. All right, come on. Let's come on for a landing now. All right. That was definitely not great. Come on, let's stop now. Can we please do that? Where's our reverse? Oh, it's not working out. Ah, I haven't used X-Plane in a long time. Why isn't it reversing? Probably in real life, it would have had reverse. I've crashed the Concorde B. That's great. Uh, that's definitely not worked. Yeah, I'm great. You know, I am wondering, though, why the Concorde B failed. Maybe uh, I've got a friend's heritage. Hong. Concorde can give us information. Just four months after the Concorde began her scheduled service in 1976, a Concorde B model was first discussed. This one. Let's see where right now. I mean, we've got some information here. The cost of the Concorde project was massive, and with the poor sales of Concorde and cattle options from airlines, adding at the rising costs of aviation fuel during the 1970s, you know, oil crisis, development of the Model B version was considered too expensive and cancelled. Oh, here, this website is actually really cool. We've got a proper range comparison now. Here we go, Model B range. Check this out. Trans-Pacific flights here, connecting all the oceans with the Concorde. That's really cool. Wow, this is, we've got this very nicely detail. You know, I think the Concorde B is one thing in a great example of how money always wins, especially in aviation. You know, I think the Concorde just kind of happened at the wrong time, and it's nice that we can soon actually see a new version of the Concorde, but the boom over sure, maybe. Things like that, supersonic planes maybe are coming back because it didn't really work the first time. Maybe let's uh, do a proper takeoff test now. Here we got Saba Airport. Trust from way in the world, this will definitely work or not. I don't, I don't really care. Come on, give it full power. We are accelerating quite a bit. Check this out. We need like 120 knots to take off and be see if this will work. And I've crashed the wing. But nothing to be worried about. The Concorde B with its incredibly powerful engines and flaps is now able to take off at Saba. Do whatever you want with that information. So really, thank you guys so much for joining me on this trip through history. And thanks to Goon for uploading this add-on here and introducing us to the Concorde Model B, a concept I personally have never heard about. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. Well, thank you so much to all the people who give me lots of monies, like Mariana, Ragings, Junk in the Trunk, Mike, John O'Brien, Derek, Matt, Sleepy Boy, Kelly Chaos, Ryland Williams, New York, Shadow, Ignuana, and, and Moritz Bohausen.